I finally put aside some time today here in the Llama Lab to put a theory to the test. I've been thinking about this one for a while and the outcomes weren't what I expected, but there were still some things learnt along the way which I thought I'd share. Backing up a little bit to set some groundwork before I tell you exactly what I got up to here today. So the ride feel of an indoor trainer depends on a few things. Typically it's the flywheel. It includes the flywheel weight, the flywheel size, the internal gearing of the trainer, and the speed of the flywheel that spins. Wheel-on trainers are notoriously bad for good inertia or good ride feel. Usually you have to sort of slog the pedal over because they have a lighter flywheel. That lack of inertia or lack of momentum is the first thing people notice that's different between indoor riding and outdoor riding. Outdoors, if you stop pedaling your bike on a flat road, it takes a quite a while to come to a complete stop. Whereas indoors, if you stop pedaling your bike, things grind to a halt pretty quick. It's like riding straight into a headwind. While it's good training, it's something to always push against. Sometimes that's not the best ride experience. And for me, a trainer with a big flywheel, such as the Le Mans Revolution, provides a really, really good experience indoors, just like outdoors. Today's Llama Lab test included two things. That is the Kicker Snap version two, or the Kicker Snap 17 wheel on trainer and the Stack Halcyon wheel weights with the extra weight kit added to those as well, so the double kit. The Snap has a flywheel weight of 10.5 pounds, which is 4.7 kilos, and the Stack Halcyon weight kit adds an extra few kilos to that. That is static weight, depending on where you put them is how it affects the ride feel. So that is effectively the only weights though that are used on the Stack Halcyon, so I'm combining the two. Hopefully giving me more inertia, more momentum, and maybe a better ride feel. So the questions I set out to answer today were, will combining these two things result in a better overall experience in both sim mode, so riding hills and simulation, in erg mode for holding steady state watts and overs and unders and things, the Llama lab test, in sprints, and how would it affect the power readings by adding that extra weight to the flywheel overall? And the results of these tests may give us answers about the ride feel or ride experience or power accuracy with different wheels that you're using on your indoor trainer. So if you use a heavy training wheel, will it impact the ride feel of the snap compared to a super lightweight carbon wheel, which you probably shouldn't be using anyway, but hey, some of us do. Will using those two different wheels change the ride feel or experience indoors? And the final question, of course, being, is this a worthy upgrade? Is this something I'd recommend? Did it change the ride feel? Was it awesome? Was it any good? Well, let's get into it and have a look. Today's testing involved multiple laps of Watopia Hilly, a 9.1 kilometer course on Zwift that I'm very familiar with, with its ascents, descents, flats, and rolling terrain and then into some shortened Llama lab tests of five minutes on and then five minutes on even higher, into some sprints, into some over and unders. And I performed those with the weights off with the standard kicker snap setup and the weights on the rear wheel with the kicker snap. The power meter I was comparing the snap to was the PowerTap P1s. I also had the ZWatt Spider on, which I'll hide from the graphs except for the sprints because the ZWatt Spider tends to read high indoors. Multiple spin downs were performed and let me just show you on the graph where they are. So jumping over here to my favorite website on the internet, DC Ramica's analysis tool, where we can compare multiple power meters recorded at the same time with an overlay and see how they stack up. Let me just frame this. Right, okay, we are now properly in frame. Okay, data set here, kicker snap two versus the PowerTap P1 pedals and two Llama lab tests you can see up here. So first of all, multiple spin downs were performed at the start, at 20 minutes in, uh, just before the overs and unders, after the weights were installed, after the sprints, before the overs and unders again. So multiple spin downs were performed. The first thing I will talk about is the spin down time, which didn't change a lot after the weights were installed. So 14.3 seconds, 14.4 seconds, 15.2 seconds with the weights off multiple spin downs. I just wanted to make sure everything was totally lined up for this whole session. So multiple spin downs were performed. And then with the weights on, the spin downs were 12.8 seconds, which was not what I thought. So a shorter spin down time with a heavier wheel on. And then 14.6, so the second spin down done with the weights on was about ballpark okay. Not what I expected, but we continued through. Okay, onto the data itself. Here is the first 20 minutes of riding. And this is straight off the shelf riding along cold tire, 105 psi, two and a half turns of the dial on the back. Things were pretty, pretty good. Uh, the first few minutes was a little off. And then uh, 
what do we have here? I'll just select this here and have a good. 186 versus 193. The kicker snap is plus or minus 3%. The power tap P1 pedal is plus or minus 1.5%. That's looking pretty good. And the ride experience and the ride feel of that, just to remind myself of the snap and how it goes in sim mode, because I haven't ridden it for a while, it was pretty good. The descents were the descents, the hills kicked in nice, and uh, it didn't really have that sloggy feel to it. The kicker does have that 4.7 kilo flywheel, so there is a bit of momentum there anyway. Not as much as a wheel off trainer, but it's still pretty good. Into the Llama Lab test here and into the sprints. Uh, again, looking pretty good. You can hardly differentiate the two power meters there. That was all good. Uh, the sprints though, we do need to talk about the sprints. The kicker snap uh, is a little bit too high, a, a lot too high. You can see here the power tap P1's up against the kicker snap. Very, very different. The snap really holds that wattage a little bit too high through the sprint. So overshooting in sprints for that test there. Spin down performed here into the overs and unders. Again, with just the standard snap setup, it's all looking pretty good. All pretty much within spec there. Happy days. Then, stopping everything and installing the weights. Now installing the weights to the Stack Halcyon Zero trainer, if you've done it multiple times, it's probably nice and quick. For me, about 10 minutes or so to get those weights on and balanced and sorted out. So once they were on, it was back into the exact same tests again. So another lap of Whitetopia Hilly and then into the Llama Lab test after the spin downs were performed. So here we go into the data of the sim mode. Not too bad, reading a little higher, but still kind of within spec plus or minus. The ride feel didn't really change a lot. It really didn't. I thought it might roll into the hills a little, uh, a little bit more um, smoother into the hills, not so abrupt. I really couldn't tell. Once it's up to speed, the inertia and the momentum is all about the change of speed and resistance. You won't feel it once it's up to speed and um, at pace, but I couldn't really tell to be honest. I was quite surprised with that. And then into the steady state stuff and some sprints here. Now, yes, there are dropouts from the snap because I guess everyone has dropouts, don't they? So looking at these specific sections through here though, it all looks pretty good. The numbers were great. Uh, the ride feel in erg mode didn't change. It was same, same. Even with that additional weight on that rear wheel, I couldn't tell. So it was holding the numbers still pretty good. Into the sprints and uh, yeah, I will put my hand up and admit that I screwed up. I didn't hit the tab key to jump into the sprint mode and I unleashed a sprint whilst I was at a, uh, 250 erg. So my bad, but we do see the snap go through the roof compared to the P1s. Once I'd stopped and gathered myself, I performed another sprint and we see the same thing again there. So the snap is way, way overshooting those sprints here at about, what's that, around 150 watts or so sustained. Um, I'll loop back to those in a minute with a third power meter, but it was overshooting in sprints with or without the weights. Into the overs and unders with the weights on, it's all good. Held watts well. Um, the ride feel was just as good. I really couldn't tell. It wasn't a world of difference anyway. So that was all cool. Now I did say I had another power meter on the bike, the Z Watt Zbyter, which does read high. So I'll quickly flip that up and show you in the sprints that the power tap P1s here and the Zbyter read uh, the same and the kicker through the roof, the kicker snap. And then to my two sprints here, you can see the, um, well, especially here, the power tap P1s and the Zbyter are like that in the sprint, really, really good. And the snap through the roof. So the conclusion there is the snap is overshooting sprints with the current firmware that it's on. Um, and just to confirm there that the um, Zwatt Zbyter is a little higher in the steady state. That's why I don't include it. I only really include trusted or known trusted power meters in my uh, tests. And if you've watched my Zbyter review, it's a little high in erg mode. So that's the data. Okay, back into the Llama Lab and into the conclusion of today's Llama Lab test with the Kicker Snap 2 and the Stack Halcyon weights on the wheel. First question, did this have a noticeable impact on the overall ride feel or experience on the Kicker Snap? No, it really didn't. It didn't have the impact that I thought it would. I thought it would add a lot more momentum, a lot more oomph, a bit of grunt into the sprints. No real difference, to be honest, that I felt through the pedals there. That 4.7 kilo flywheel on the Kicker Snap Seems to be pretty good as is. The power readings weren't impacted a lot at all. In steady state, all same, same. 
Into the sprints, well, it overshot the sprints in both cases, so we saw that. The weight of the wheel you use on an indoor trainer, such as the Kicker Snap, really won't impact the ride feel. So if you've got an old trainer wheel, an old Mavic 32-spoke, 36-spoke wheel, it's really not going to change the, change the ride feel or what you experience indoors with power, sprints, or anything, as long as you have a good tyre on there, nice and clean, pumped up to 105 to 110 psi, and that knob, two and a half turns, so there's no slippage. What will have an impact on that ride feel is the speed of the flywheel. So the gearing that you choose to do your erg modes in. For most of mine, it's in the little ring and then about the 17 up the back. If you were to put it in the big ring for your erg mode efforts and really spin up that flywheel, that does have an impact on the ride feel. It'll give you more inertia, more momentum. You'll be more on top of the gear. This is a whole topic in itself. I will link below to my video on gear selection in erg mode. Does it matter? Yes, it does. Links below to that, but I think that's going to have a lot more impact than adding just a heavier wheel to your bike indoors here for a wheel on trainer. Having said all that, that's my experiment with the Kicker Snap trainer and its flywheel. This may have more of an impact on something like the Cyclops Magnus, which has a flywheel of only 1.17 kilos. It's just a little bit more than a paperweight. So adding those stack healthy and weights to that trainer may have more of an impact. Hmm. Anyway, there's today's Llama Lab Test. I had a bit of fun doing that. It was a good 90 minutes or so indoors and uh, yeah, getting more Llama Lab Tests done than I needed, especially in those sprints. Interesting stuff. All right, thanks for watching. Remember to hit like, hit subscribe, and leave a comment below if you find this interesting.